welcome to the sky food channel today with the number one urban farming insect after my opinion let's see what you think if you try to breed them Samia ricini the famous eerie silk worm originally from India then 1974 introduced to Thailand and then uh, today one of the most famous silk and edible insects that we know here you see some in the already L2 stage yes what I will do is uh, just check all the larvas add some new food that I have prepared prunus lauro cerasus the cherry laurel uh, plant that you find everywhere in all the cities, towns, warehouses are uh, mostly used um, as a decorative shrub for making fences or something like that. And this is one of the reasons why Samia ricini is the number one urban farming insect for the West. Why? Because this plant is evergreen also in the winter, so you can feed this tropical animal all year long with fresh feed from this fodder plant so that makes it very easy to experiment uh, of course in the winter time uh, at home in indoors in your living room that's no problem uh, to breed them as you can see uh, in the playlist uh, Lolo de Valier also uh, made a breeding project in a gangway of a house that's fantastically so what you see is a lot of um, pellets fresh pellets of the larva so now they are in L2 stage and they eat a lot of this um, leaf material normally I just wash them and then I cover them with the fresh leaves and after three or four feeding processes that's about one week I change of course also the whole uh, material that is left uh, in, in the bottom with the fresh pellets so I clean it out a little bit so that they have a clean place to stay so where do I have them from they are actually from uh, Thailand I brought uh, around 200 eggs uh, with me uh, from my travel to Thailand Vietnam and Cambodia and in the next few minutes I show you uh, where they are from this is the field with the fodder plant of Somio ricini, ricinus or the castor plant. It's a model farm on the Kampang San campus of the Kotetart University. First the leaves are washed, dried under a sheet and then they bring it into the grow room where the caterpillars are fed every day. Here big L3 stage caterpillars, here the smaller ones L2 stage, everything very clean here, no direct light, temperature around 25 degrees. Not only the Thai species, the completely white one that you see here, first imported 1974, you only see, also see the Indian uh, original Samyaritini here with the black spots, also some varieties in a yellowish greenish tone. Like here, some of them ready to produce the cocoon, all in pre pupa stage. Beautiful big caterpillars. Here are the pupas, they are used to produce more adults uh, who produce more eggs for all the farmers. Professor Uravan is here explaining to the people of the Thailand Beetle Breeder Club how it all works from the production of the uh, cocoons to the eggs that are laid here and how they are spun. Uh, the cocoons to make a beautiful thread with the eerie silk, some things we will see later. Here's the cage where the adults close from the 
cocoons. It's a very simple installation. As soon as the adults come out, they hang on the knees and can uh, default their wings. Then they are brought into these plastic uh, boxes to find a partner. And as soon as they start mating, the pairs are brought into this kind of a cage where they are put on these vertical uh, small branches for the egg laying process. And here are the eggs. And um, yes, I was asked, of course, also how many that I would like to bring to Europe. First, they wanted to give me 2,000. But I said, I think that 200 is enough to restart a population. Here they are, in the hand of him. Bring them to Europe. Yes, and so they came here to Switzerland, where after two days after I arrived in Switzerland, they came out of the X. They hatched at the L2 stage. That was around two weeks ago. Now they are in L2 stage. And yes, I think in around 30 days, in a month, there will be new adults here. And I was not only looking for the eggs or larvas of the Iris silkworm, but also for uh, a machine that they use to spin the silk. It's a, a kind of a process as if you would um, spin cotton uh, or wool, something like that. And um, this is the machine here. Even though they explained it to me uh, exactly, I couldn't imagine how it looks when it's really working. It was nobody around at that moment, so probably next time I will have to uh, import one of these low-tech machines for spinning the cotton of the Erie silkworm. Yeah, the silk of the Erie silkworm is a little different than the one from the mulberry silkworm. It's uh, softer and smoother uh, in the touch and beautiful things you can make with them. Here in the showroom we see some of the examples of the fabrics they make, also for decoration of lamps as we see here, or to create the uh, haute cuisine or haute <laughs> high fashion. And here a beautiful picture of Queen Kit made of woven threads of silk of the eerie silk worm. It's not a painted picture, it's actually woven. And of course all this beautiful things made with eerie silk. It's a special uh, invention against ants, the building surrounded with water. And here one more time, the big, beautiful, eerie silkworms in the last stage. So now we have to just care for them, feed them, and uh, rid them of every second day, at least every second day, in the Next stage is L3 to L5, third to fifth caterpillar stage. We will have to feed them every day. So that's um, a thing you have to do with uh, discipline. If you uh, have no time to do that in the morning every day, so you better don't try to breed some of your routine. It's not a lot of work, but you have to do it regularly so that they grow uh, well and easy, as you can see it. Here. Thanks for watching.